Hey my friends, welcome to a brand new video. My name is Liv or Olivia if you've never been here before. Thank you for clicking on this video. Today I am just going to be walking you through the books that I read in June. I know I'm a little bit late once again, but I promised myself I would try to keep up with my wrap-ups, but I hope this wrap-up in particular isn't too repetitive because half these books are from the Suns Out Books Out readathon. So I'm going to be talking about those last in case you just came from my readathon vlog. You may have already heard some of my more specific thoughts on some books, but I still wanted to mention them just in case you guys didn't watch that video or you want to hear like my overall rating or something like that. I read five other books. Two of those were manga slash graphic novels besides the readathon. So that makes a total of 10 books that I read this month, which really is not bad. Five of them I read within one week, which is kind of crazy and makes me think why can't I not read that much on a regular basis? I don't know. But here we are ready to talk about all the books that I read in June. So let's just get right to it. First off, we're going to start with my absolute favorite book from the month that I read and it actually made me ugly cry. If you follow me on Instagram, you probably will not be surprised by this one, but it definitely surprised me. I had no clue I was going to love this book as much as I did and now it has sent me down a Taylor Jenkins Reid rabbit hole of reading all of her backlist titles and that is One True Loves by Taylor Jenkins Reid. I don't even have words for this book. As you can see, I tabbed a bunch of moments, a bunch of things that I loved about this. I'm actually going to be meeting her in September with some friends, so I do have some backlist title catching up to do. But in this book, we have our main character, Emma, whose husband supposedly passed away in a terrible plane accident. And a couple years later, she ends up engaged to like her high school sweetheart named Sam. And so her husband actually was just stranded on an island and they found him and he comes back and just expects everything in their relationship to be the same. She had tried to move on and tried to find love again, but then he comes back into her life and just completely changes the game. I definitely have a new favorite fictional crush with Sam Kemper in this book. If you know, you know. If you have not yet read this, please read this book. I adored it. I have quickly become such a fan of like contemporary lit romance this year or this summer I should say. I don't know where that side of me is coming from but this was a solid five stars for me. I was tugged in both directions. I didn't really know who she was gonna end up with and I was just on the edge of my seat the whole time. There's a last line of this book that just did me in and made me sob. There was a part where our main character Emma was kind of frustrating me a little bit because she didn't know which man she wanted to choose and I thought there would be like an obvious choice but then there wasn't an obvious choice and she was making a couple dumb decisions that I didn't really like but in the end I was very pleased with how this turned out and I just really need more Taylor Jenkins read in my life. I cannot wait until Daisy Jones comes out and this was just such a pleasant surprise. I decided to pick this up on a whim. I don't know if I actually put it on my June TBR. I feel like I didn't but if I didn't and I just picked it up because of mood reading I definitely don't regret it. The next book I want to talk about that I I think was a solid, I don't know if it was three and a half, four. I'm honestly still deciding what in the world to rate this book because I don't know how to feel about it. I think this is a book where the hype really got to me and I was let down a little bit and that is The Good Sister by Sally Hepworth. In this book we have two twin sisters named Fern and Rose and Fern wants to pay back her sister Rose for everything she's ever done for her in her life to take care of her because her sister Rose unfortunately cannot have children of her own. So she puts it upon herself to have a child for Rose and all she has to do is find the perfect dad. While the outcome was very predictable and I thought this would be a little bit more thrilling, it definitely just read as like contemporary lit in my mind. I still really enjoyed this and that's because our main character Fern is absolutely adorable. She's an amazing human being. I believe she struggles with some type of mental disability but what I really liked about what the author did is the author didn't identify or 
name any type of thing that she lives with and I really liked that because I feel like we need more representation in books without having to flat out say it and consider it a problem. So I really really loved that about this book. I could relate so much to Fern just being an introvert. She works at a library so she is obsessed with books and there's just so much to like about Fern and so much not to like about Rose because she's an awful sister. There was a lot that I loved about this book but also it was just nothing new if that makes sense. Like it's not that memorable of a plot but the characters is what I really loved. So I definitely want to consider picking up more Sally Hepworth books. I think I actually own The Mother-in-Law so I'm definitely not going to be giving up on this author or anything but I definitely think I know now what my expectations should be going into this author's work. The next book I read was just on audio so I don't own this physically is Something Wilder by Christina Lauren. I recently read Love in Other Words and I saw that this book was on Scribd and I really really loved Love in Other Words and I just wanted to read another Christina Lauren kind of feel-good book and I am so glad I decided to listen to this on a whim but this was probably a solid four stars for me and what's interesting is going into this book I was only about like 30 minutes it's in and I was very hesitant and I almost considered DNFing because this is set I believe in Utah on a ranch. I can't remember exactly the location but it read like a western atmosphere and that is definitely not something that I'm familiar with or really like the vibes of in a book. It's not something I gravitate towards and so I was very skeptical going in but let me just say there are some twists and turns in this book that I did not see coming. So if you don't know anything about this book, we have our main character, Lily, whose father, Duke, passed away and supposedly left this treasure somewhere. And Lily and her friend are actually in charge of camping with people and kind of like giving them tours. And so there's a group of guys that come into the town to get a tour from Lily and Lily realizes her ex, Leo, is actually part of this group of guys that's vacationing here and let's just say there's a little bit of a second chance romance which I personally love a little bit of childhood sweethearts in this and I really enjoyed the romance but again if you're someone that reads mystery thrillers I honestly think you would like this it's a little bit slower paced in the beginning but there's a huge twist a couple twists that I did not see coming and I just really enjoyed this book more than I thought I would so I'm really glad that I picked it up on a whim and I feel like Christina Lawrence could almost be like a new auto buy author for me. I'm glad I decided to pick it up and if you're hesitant like I was about the whole like ranch vibes, don't be because there's a lot more to uncover in this book. The first graphic novel that I picked up in the month of June was Be Prepared by Vera Brosgol. I docked this a star to be honest because I didn't really prefer the greens throughout this whole book and I know that's probably a picky thing to say but I very very much enjoyed this. I gave it four stars. It was so much fun and if you're wanting those summer camp vibes definitely pick this one up. In this book, we have our main character, Vera, who all she's ever wanted in life is to go to a normal person summer camp, but then her church that she's heavily involved in and her family goes to, they have their own camp and it's nothing like what she thinks it will be. I believe it's a Russian camp or Orthodox camp. I can't remember exactly what, but they have church services and things that they go to and the girls she stays with are actually older than her and so she is having trouble finding anyone that she can even be friends with at this camp. And basically it's not the experience she wanted it to be or that she thought it was going to be. Just know that the humor in this is absolutely amazing. I want to pick up all the other graphic novels that this author has written because I just enjoyed it so incredibly much. And this is almost a memoir, I guess you could say. It's so much fun when you have a biographical element to a graphic novel. I think it just makes makes it extra special. I really enjoyed this book a lot. I would definitely recommend it for all of your camp
vamp vibe needs. The next manga series that I continued in the month of June is none other than Spy Family. No surprise here, I think I'm actually all caught up with the books that are out physically. I believe number eight comes out in September, so I do have some time to wait. This is one of my absolute favorite, if not my top favorite manga series now of all time. In this book we have Donovan who is like the school bully and his dad owns the school or is on the board and in this novel specifically we explore a little bit more of his relationship with his father and why he is such a mean kid. There is a lot more that goes down in this book but we do get a lot more cute Anya moments which I love and if you guys don't know anything about this series it's about kind of an unconventional found family trope of our main character who is an assassin who needs to create this fake family and so he finds a wife who is secretly an assassin and then they go to this orphanage and pick up a girl named Anya who actually is a telepath. She knows all these secrets and things that are going on with her so-called parents but they don't know that she can read minds I believe. There's just so many extremely fun and funny and adventurous moments. I cannot get enough of this series. And now going into all the books I read for Suns Out Books Out, like I said I read five books and one of those was a graphic novel but I will have to say my favorite book that I read that week was My Best Friend's Exorcism by Grady Hendrix. I have always put this book off because of the exorcism elements. It sounds terrifying and there is definitely a couple terrifying chapters especially if you listen to the audiobook for this one but this book is kind of like a summer horror flick if you can imagine those kind of vibes. We have our two main characters named Abby and Gretchen who are kind of forced to be friends. They become friends when one of them is having a party themed around E.T. which I love that. The 80s vibes in this are absolutely amazing. I love a good E.T. moment. But these two are kind of outcast friends that are very unique that end up bonding and one of them like I said becomes possessed by a demon or technically Satan himself which sounds very dark and crazy and weird but the humor in this to offset those dark vibes is just amazing. Grady Hendrix has to have some type of weird stuff going on in his mind to create these stories because the visuals you get while reading his books are just crazy insane. I did not care too much for the final girl support group but I liked the writing and the humor enough to want to pick this one up and I also immediately bought the Southern Book Club's Guide to Slaying Vampires which is literally the longest title in the universe but after reading this I knew I just needed to read all of his books. But this book has the best friendship dynamic that probably I've ever read. The way that Abby just absolutely supports and like dedicates her time and energy to taking care of Gretchen and sacrificing herself in so many ways was just so precious and touching and I want to say I would do that for my friend if I was in this position. But overall this was a I think four and a half star for me. I really didn't like the way that Gretchen's parents treated her so that was probably the worst part of this book is they excused all of her problems and weren't genuinely really wanting to help their daughter. They just like brushed her aside. I was really fed up with them. So that's kind of why I knocked this down a half star. But other than that, this would be perfect for fall time or summer. And I just feel like all year round, this is just a great book. And my next favorite book that is probably another all-time favorite for me now is Dial A for Auntie by Jessica Q. Sutanto. I was so surprised by this book as well, which I kind of was and I kind of wasn't because someone kept telling me it reads like Finley Donovan and I love Finley Donovan. That's probably one of my favorite series now of all time, so I was surprised but also not surprised by this. The only reason I rated it four stars is because I didn't really care for the romance. I feel like it took away from the shenanigans and the humorous moments in this book. We have our main character named Madeline who has grown up with her four aunties who are constantly meddling in her love life and trying to match make for her and they actually own a wedding industry or a wedding business 
where one of them creates cakes, one of them does the hair and makeup, and then our main character is the photographer. And her mom sets her up on this blind date before this wedding. Things go crazy and the blind date actually dies. So I'm not gonna tell you how, but it is in the synopsis, so I'm not spoiling it. But let's just say they try to hide the body and I laughed out loud more times than I can count. This was so unbelievable, but so entertaining and I just need everyone to read this book, especially the audio. She does the voices of all the aunties and it was just so amazing. How can you not have a great time reading this book? If you can suspend your disbelief for a little bit, I think you will really be able to enjoy this book as well. The next book that unfortunately I gave three stars and I really wanted to give more stars to, but I just don't think this book was for me, is Reckless Girls by Rachel Hawkins. We have six friends who just want to go on a blissful vacation on an island and the island they go to does have have weird rumors about it that people have died here and there's so many other creepy things that have happened on this island and so they're like you know what we're not scared let's go experience it for ourselves. That is pretty much all I want to say about this book but what made it a three star for me is one there was just so much language in this book. It was so bothersome. It took me out of the story. It was really unnecessary. Like sure, I understand if you're angry or mad or scared or whatever, if there's a genuine purpose in saying these things. Maybe that's just me being really picky, but I don't think I've ever read a book that has this much language in it for absolutely no reason. That really took me out of the story. And second of all, the pacing was really off with this. Our last 50 pages or even even 40 pages were hit with about four different multiple plot twists. I feel like if those have been spread throughout, I may have been a little bit more invested, but I also thought about DNFing this because it was so slow. And this did read more like, I guess, chiclet or like contemporary romance with like a side of mystery. So this wasn't really a thriller to me. There was those tropical island vibes, which I appreciated, but the story for me just really did not stand out. I can't even tell you any of the characters' names, but I know a couple of my other friends actually really enjoyed this book. So I definitely say don't rule out reading this just because I didn't care for it. I feel like there's definitely an audience out there that would enjoy this book. And then we have my graphic novel that I picked up for the readathon called Surfside Girls, The Secret of Danger Point. This is a middle grade graphic novel series and I gave this four stars. So I definitely will be picking up the second book at some point. And if you just want those cozy coastal like small town summer vibes this was absolutely perfect these two girls are best friends and they do everything together and one of them ends up finding this secret cove which also has to do with another secret that i don't want to spoil too much honestly i would recommend going into this book without reading the synopsis at all basically there's this property or this land that the mayor is determined to set up like this giant hotel and bring in a bunch of tourists but the whole city is like no we want to keep this like a cozy coastal town that everyone can enjoy instead of like this big fancy city and so they are against the mayor and trying to keep this piece of land the way it is these girls were so stinking cute they have little crushes on boys and it just made me smile the whole way through i'm honestly really shocked that not more people have picked this up because it was published in 2017 people are really sleeping on this series. So again, I was very pleasantly surprised that first of all, I don't even know how I found this, but second of all, that it was actually really, really cute and really, really good. Last but not least was probably my least favorite book that I read in June. Unfortunately, was The Counselors by Jessica Goodman. This cover, first of all, is very deceiving. It looks kind of like a murder mystery or even a camp slasher 
of some sort because you have the blood on the cover but unfortunately this just fell really flat for me in a lot of different ways and I think I rated it two stars so while this book wasn't the worst book I've ever read it definitely wasn't the best so in this book we have a summer camp where a bunch of privileged really rich kids go and at the summer camp we have our main character can't even remember her name but she has two other friends that always work and come during the summer with her at this camp and that's the only time of year she sees them but some things start getting weird when her ex actually drowns in the lake and they can't figure out who did it so it's kind of like a whodunit book but there's also just a lot of adult content a lot of like drinking in this book a lot of drama and I really wish we could have done without that in this book I feel like it just felt so out of place and I really just wanted like summer camp vibes and fun times. I didn't really want all of this teenage drama. I didn't really like the way these three girls were friends. There was so much miscommunication. I honestly am trying to think of good things to say about this book, but other than the atmosphere and being able to picture myself at summer camp again when I was a kid, there just wasn't a lot here for me to like. Sadly, I may end up unhauling this one, but I'm really glad I gave it a shot and then I did follow through for the group read because it was fun chatting with everyone. Well there you have it my friends. I think that is all the 10 books that I read in June and I definitely have three new absolute favorites probably ever with these three so I am very excited about that and some of the other books I feel that I read were like mediocre so I feel like it was a fairly good reading month. I feel like this year is already going so much better than last year when I kept picking up books Books on a whim and I feel like now that I have been sticking to an actual TBR of books I've picked who knew it actually helps me and I'm finding new favorite books this year I'm very excited to see what the rest of this year holds and the rest of the summer but thank you as always for clicking on this video supporting my channel and taking the time out of your day to watch this I love you guys so much and I will see you in my next video